There are a lot of different ways and reasons why players make errors, and I think as long as you have an understanding that they are going to happen, but you have to find ways to overcome and be as consistent as possible. Um, you think of the elements, the wet ball, the cold, uh, the windy conditions can have an effect on how the ball flight comes out. Whether or not you grab a seam with the baseball I think is important. I think every player tries to get a four seam grip to make their throws accurate, but most problems come when uh, the rhythm and timing of a play is broken, and when that happens, happens, there's a breakdown in mechanics and players have to fight to try to adjust to get back in line. Now, I like to look at throwing uh, from a pitcher standpoint. You hear pitchers talk about getting to a balance point. Well, both infielders and outfielders have to get to balance points as well, and meaning that they have to get their backside underneath them to create energy towards their target. And it's that transfer of energy that leads to accuracy and strength of throw. So ideally, when you see a player like J.J. Hardy or Machado or any of the Orioles players get into a good throwing position, that right foot sets up and they find that balance point, and then they're able to extend through. And this is a good balance point. You see pitchers get into this type of uh, position with their mechanics, and then they're able, that momentum that they create with their uh, energy really starts on that back foot. It works up through the legs and then follows through until it finally releases out of the hand in front. And that's just a matter of uh, kind of locking up all your energy and guiding it in the right direction. If there is a breakdown anywhere with those pieces of throwing, then that's a weak link in the chain and there's gonna be a problem and accuracy is typically affected by that. So great infielders, and I'm gonna reference JJ again, three-time gold glove winner, he gets himself into a prime throwing position almost every time. Even if he backhands the ball or come, has to go around, he'll try to set up to where that back foot sets and he's lined up to his target. Both the front side, the front shoulder, and his glove is used as almost like a sight line, and then he follows through, keeping that nose really basically directed right towards the target. All right, now watching what you just described here, most of the throwing errors, and just off the top of my head, but most of them seem to be, maybe it's in haste, when the fielder tries to throw sidearm or on the run. Now, if you know a ball may tail more throwing sidearm as opposed to what you just described, why not get it into your thinking and mindset hey, I better not drop down here because I might throw a two-seamer it's going to miss Chris Davis. Well, this is what they fight for. They strive to get into that A position every time. Sometimes the game is just too quick. I mean, these guys are flying down the line, and you have to improvise. So you have to find a different center. And Manny Machado, a lot of the shortstops and middle infielders have to learn how to find that center point so that they can maintain accuracy even in an unbalanced position. But if you see a player who's out of balance, then they start falling off to the side. That's when you're going to see a lot of leaks with the throw. Infielders are taught, hey, there's the first baseman. Aim for that target over there. This is one of the things that we're not seeing this year with the Orioles that we've seen in the past. They're picking their brothers up. Right. First baseman's making picks. Second baseman and shortstop are picking the catcher. Third baseman's making picks from the outfield coming in. This is how you have a solid defense. Not only do you have to catch the ball and throw it to a base, but if your job is to catch it on the other end, you have to do whatever you can. And the Orioles have been great at that. That's why they had that historic defense a few years ago. Mm -hmm. They were helping their teammates out by picking balls, getting in good positions. Bad throws are going to happen. What happens on the other end can eliminate a lot of those throwing errors. All right, it seems to me that major league infielders, uh, almost to a man, middle infielders, even third baseman, begin as shortstops, either signed as shortstops. Uh, Jimmy Paredes, for instance, signed as a shortstop. Hasn't played it much at all as a pro, but he was signed. Uh, John Jonathan Scope, shortstop. J.J. Hardy, shortstop. Manny Machado, shortstop. And one of the things about a shortstop, and you know better than anyone, when you're turning a double play and coming across the bag and a runner's coming in, that might be where you do that underneath to avoid the runner. Now, is that a bad habit that is in the back of a former shortstop's <laughs> mindset that you don't have to do that anymore if there's not a runner coming in on you? Right. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. There are a lot of things that get that happen in the course of a ball game. You know, just the speed of the game. And I think habits are created sometimes, especially turning double plays. I know that I had a diff couple different looks turning a double play, but as long as my feet were in a good lined up position towards my target, then I could kind of change my arm angle because I already created the good energy. And then dropping down sometimes might be just because where the throw is. Mm -hmm. If you take a low throw, you want to release from where you catch the ball because it takes too much time to come up, you know, if it's a faster runner getting down the line. And other times, you want to send a message and tell these guys to get down. So you <laughs> drop down a little bit and force them to slide a little bit sooner. But getting 
the legs underneath any kind of thrower, whether you're a pitcher, catcher throwing out runners, infielder or an outfielder, your legs have to be underneath you and you have to find that center balance point. All right, finally, you own the record most consecutive games at shortstop in big league history without an error. Obviously, catching the ball is part one, throwing the ball is part two. Thinking back to that season, how much did you work on in game preparation prior to the game? We see you taking ground balls every day as we see the Orioles of today doing that. How much did you work on your throwing just to all those things you talk about, make sure that you didn't have to think about it and it just happened? Yeah, I uh, love to throw. So I threw every group. Um, I was fortunate to not have a lot of arm injuries in my career. I was taught at a young age to take care of it and do my uh, exercises to keep my arm strength up. And I enjoyed throwing, and I think it helped me with my accuracy. I think the more you repeat something the right way, the better you're going to be. And that was my goal. And I think when I got uh, into my career, maybe 10 years into my career, I felt comfortable on the field that I knew exactly what I wanted to do on most balls to get myself into a good position to where I could efficiently and effectively get the ball over first base or wherever my target it was. All right, so for the Orioles of today, when they work with Bobby Dickerson and we see all the drills that he has with the tennis balls and putting batting helmets on and all, all these different things just to keep it, uh, I guess, interesting. But the key is, is that when they work on it, they're out there, they understand this is something we have to practice, muscle memory, whatever, but they go about and do it. Absolutely. I mean, there is a purpose to everything an infielder does, whether it be getting low on a ball, exaggerating moves, or whether it be the tennis ball drill where you get behind, your eyes behind the baseball. You, there are so many different ways to set up to a baseball and Bobby Dickerson teaches it the right way the fundamentally sound way that will carry over and make consistent and efficient infielders and that's why they're out here doing drills and they are gonna get better I mean these guys are proven there's too many gold gloves on the infield and like I said it's helping each other out I mean being a team if the guy makes a bad throw get your face in there pick it up for him I mean that's the way you're gonna have successful uh, gold, glove, gold glove defense all right Mike Bordick an expert on defense and one thing we know and I agree with what Mike said there by by the end of the year, the Orioles will be either at the top or near the top in defensive statistics because this is a team that has outstanding defensive players, and they're going to put it all together.